I follow my curiosity and it takes me into all kinds of strange places and I satisfy that curiosity as much as I can when I'm working and and I do it for the simple reason that there are things I need to know and understand for my own sake to be able to, if I feel I'm going to take on the life of another man, I feel that I owe it to that being to, to try and understand them. It's as simple as that. So we go to these great lengths to try and create a world for ourselves. And within that world, we try and create an understanding of the lives that we're expressing in that world. And for me, that's where the pleasure of the work is. So Some combination of the two, with the voice being such a deep personal reflection of character, of who we are. Mm -hmm. And that voice may be quite a surprising reflection of who we seem to be uh, in some cases, but it is undoubtedly, it's, it's, it's kind of a fingerprint of the soul. Yeah, fear was something that I, um, I uh, certainly was um, uh, aware of, and I suppose the thing is that it's the work that takes over. Um, you know, once that decision seems to make itself, which if you're lucky it does at some point, the curiosity and the work takes over, and luckily, uh, not that it doesn't come back from time to time, but for the most part, it just gets pushed aside. <laughs> I don't like noise. I don't like the clutter of, of um, you know, too much of that, and, and because it always distracts you from what you're actually trying to get on and do, which is just, just work on the things that interest you. And like many people, the theatre seemed a forgiving trade. <laughs> From my point of view, I, I assumed I was going to have a life in the theatre because very few um, English actors at that time were getting a chance in movies. Much as I loved films, it never really occurred to me that that would be a part of my life. Um, we all really thought we were going to work in the theatre and maybe do a bit of TV to pay the bills. I knew that the capacity to do this work was something that was, it was a delicate thing. This sounds like horribly arrogant, but open auditions. I did a couple of those for the RSC and the National, where you sit in a room with 50 other miserable actors <laughs> working on a piece of Shakespeare. And then you walk into a room, there's seven men all puffed up with self-importance. And you know, you strut around and they, they look at you like a specimen of some kind. And this to me was so heartbreaking, this experience. I thought, I'm just not going to do that. And so be it. If it means I'm not going to get on in this business, so be it. Yes. I'm not going to hawk myself around and I'm not going to do work that people tell me is good no. for me. Is it more important to you when you're choosing a movie? Is it more important that the role be interesting or the character be interesting? I tend really to only work on things that I'm, I have a kind of compulsion to do. But they um, are so varied, yes, the roles that we've seen you in so far. Varied, certainly, they're, they're, they're certainly, the things that most interest me tend to be um, at some distance from my own life, and they tend to be at some distance from the characters that have interested me before as well. So, at the end of four months of this, when I really felt I'd had enough Shakespeare to last nine incarnations, <laughs> I was summoned by these directors who had never bothered to come and say hello during the whole tour because they don't speak to each other because they're all terrified of each other's work. I walk into a room and sure enough, there's those seven fellas sitting behind the desk and there's one chair on the other side of it. and and. Uh, one of them pipes up. He said, so we want to talk about your future with the Royal Shakespeare Company. I said, I said, you really don't understand. I, I came here out of respect. I said, but I have no future at the Royal Shakespeare Company. I said, <laughs> oh, well, we understand. Maybe there's some film offers sort of luring you away because a film is the great evil, you see. <laughs> I mean, they didn't understand because I'd seen Mean Streets and uh, I'd seen, uh, I'd seen um, a place in the sun and from here to eternity and giant and I'd seen on the waterfront and you know I, although that world wasn't available to me I thought well there is something that one could contribute to if only if yeah. only and I said listen I got to tell you lads I said I said here's the thing I'm going to be unemployed when I leave this room and I don't know how long I'm going to be unemployed for but for however long it is I would rather be unemployed <laughs> Work with any of you people sitting here.
but, you know, but I exercise in a, a, a rare privilege, which is that I work when I feel a compelling need to do that work, and when I don't, I do other things. Um, now, I, everyone has a different way of approaching the work that they do, and some people are absolutely compelled to do what they need to do because they have to pay bills, and there's, no, there's nothing unworthy about that. It's an honorable reason, but, but I'm lucky enough to... I, I think I made a decision many years ago that I... in the hope that I would never become cynical about the work, which was important to me, I felt there's, there's a possibility of some nobility in the work, but it's not easy to find that. Very often the work falls short of that. Mostly it does. Um, so I didn't want to find myself in my middle years, as I am now, just doing that because that's what I do without any real sense of delight. <laughs>